Hi, I'm Ted. Today I'm going to show you how to populate a formula into all rows in Excel. This is something that's very common in Excel. Anytime you have formulas, you, you're almost surely going to want to know how to do this. So I've got a spreadsheet set up here, and I'm just going to enter in a very simple formula. I've just got the formula shown up here. It's a quadratic formula. And just to show you a couple of very important points, I've got the coefficients of the polynomial here as values, and this is a really good thing to do if you have something that is going to be in a formula to actually have the value somewhere in a cell where you can see it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start typing in the formula, and there's a little trick I'm going to, I'm going to show you as we, as we do it. So we're going to type equals, and then we're going to click up here because we're going to, you know, the first one is the C0, the, the constant coefficient in the polynomial. Now I'm going to show you the trick. When we copy this formula down to multiple rows, the cell references are going to change. In other words, it's going to, the, what's in D4, when we copy it down to this next row, it's going to want to do D5, and then the next one is going to be D6. And you can see very soon we're going to get into trouble because we're going to start, uh, it, it's going to be wrong, first of all. We want to make this an absolute cell reference, meaning it won't change. The trick to doing that when you're at the point where you've just entered in that cell reference, on a Macintosh, you type Option T, and watch what happens. It's, whoops, I'm sorry, not Option T. On a Macintosh, you type Command T, and you notice what happens is that it changes the D4 to a dollar D dollar four. What that says, the dollar sign in Excel says that's going to be an absolute reference, meaning it doesn't change when you copy it. So that means that when that formula is copied elsewhere, that entry in the formula is always going to be cell D4. Um, if we type command T again, we, we get to where it, it's an absolute uh, row reference, but it's a variable column reference. If we do it again, it's now an absolute column reference, but a variable uh, row reference. And then we, we do it a couple more times. Now we've got it so that it's variable for both of them, and now we go back to what we wanted where it's $D, $4. So again, on a Macintosh, you type Command T when you're entering in the cell reference, and just keep going until you get the combination that you want. On a Windows system, instead of Command T, you just type F4. All right, so now we'll continue entering in the formula. So we're going to now go plus, and then the, the uh, the linear coefficient, and we type Command T, and then then we kind of type a times, and click on the X, and there we want it to be a variable reference. We want that to change when we copy the formula down. Actually, no, we want it to only have the. We don't want the column to change because we always want the formula anytime we copy it to still refer to this X. So now we're going to do the Command T until it doesn't change the B. So it's $B9, meaning it'll always be column B. So now um, we're just going to keep going, plus this guy here, Command T, times <coughs> the X once again, Command T a couple of times, and then finally it's a squared, so we type to the second power and we type a return. So there we go. Now, <coughs> to copy the formula, finally, you click on the formula, uh, click on the cell where the formula is, and you move your cursor until it changes to a solid plus, and you hold it down and copy down, uh, to drag it down to all the rows. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm Ted, and today I showed you how to populate a formula into multiple rows in Excel. Thanks for watching.